Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this 3D printed stand for the Adafruit Fun House. So this is a little stand and this is the Adafruit Fun House. It's a little PCB with a display, some built-in sensors for doing home automation, and it's based off of the ESP32 S2. Really nice chip and it has CircuitPython and Arduino support. So I have this little uh, this little stand. You might have seen something like this before, but what I've done here differently is I have this really cool brick texture, and the brick texture is uh, sort of a homage to uh, the Wizard of Oz. So you can see here that the PCB artwork by Philip Burgess has a lot of that uh, vibe going to it. So putting a brick texture made a lot of sense, and even more so, yellow brick road, you got some gold filament going on here. So let me show you folks the, um, the learn guide for it. So if you want to pick this up and kind of uh, print it out, you can do so by heading over to the learn guide. The Fun House is available, it's in stock right now. If it's out of stock, you can sign up to get notified when it is in stock, and there's tons of projects being worked uh, uh, already for it and more projects that are being worked on for it. So really cool way to uh, automate some home automation projects. Uh, and then the Learn Guide is this one over here. So if you want to get the STLs and just print it right away, you can do that, or you can download the Fusion 365 if you really want to tweak it and stuff. But in today's tutorial, I want to show you um, how I used kind of two new features in Fusion 360 to create the brick texture. So in Fusion 360, here it is. We have a 3D model of the, uh, of the fun house, which looks really great. It's got all of the components on the back there, and it has these built-in standoffs that makes it really easy to attach to, to, uh, to any type of uh, stand or wall mount. But uh, here's that brick texture, it looks real nice. And um, I'll uh, take a look at uh, before, it's just kind of looking at this as a standalone stand. Um, I do have a tutorial from a, a maybe a, a couple months, maybe even a year ago, that showed, that walks through how to create this um, with sketches, sketch constraints, and um, sketch dimensions. So I definitely recommend checking that out because I'm more talking about like using the emboss feature and the new thin extrude feature. Um, but it's very much the same kind of recipe to create this stand. It is parametric. We have some user parameters. So if we ever wanted to adjust the thickness, the length, the width, or even the viewing angle, we can uh, change that all up with our user parameters that I have set up here. Cool. Um, but I really want to uh, focus on like how I created the brick texture, right? So let's take a look here at the timeline and look at the kind of sketch. So I really have just one, really two, but one main sketch that, that generates the brick texture. And we'll take a look at it here. So I have some, uh, it started off as a rectangle and then I added a line in the middle of it and then some lines that are uh, parallel with it. So my here we go, let me change my selection filters real quick. Select all, there we go. So you can see here, um, I have a rectangle, right? And then I have these, uh, this line in the middle with a midpoint constraint. And that kind of creates the rows, or yeah, yeah, the rows of the bricks. And uh, now when, I'm, when I was building this out, I was, I was adding more lines than I needed, and I just kept cutting back until I had the essential lines that I need to create my pattern. It's really hard to visualize that, so I recommend like building out your whole pattern and then cutting back away until you figure out what is the main things that needs to be here to create this pattern. So to create the kind of columns, I have, the, the bricks just have this style where um, every row, they're kind of staggered, right? Every other row, they match, but they stagger uh, the rows that are right next to each other. So that's why I have this line here. And if we look at the sketch dimension, it takes this user parameter called brick length and it divides it by two. So then if you look at the second row, this line, it says brick length. So um, that's kind of establishing the spacing uh, for these bricks. And these right here, these three lines are creating the rows for a brick. And it's, it's worth noting, like I'm not building the bricks, I'm building the grout because the grout is something that I'll be able to select as one selection, as one profile. And that's really critical when you're using um, the emboss features, which, which creates that texture. So now that I have my sketches, um, I needed to create some extrudes, and the newest ex uh, addition to the extrude is you can now do thin extrudes. So while I was building this out, um, I needed to separate my extrusions so that I can use multiple 
pa uh, rectangular patterns to create this this brick pattern be just because of the way that like the columns are separate than the rows and they have different spacing so that's why i had to do these individually so the first extrude does the lines that create the rows and then the second extrude is what creates uh the the columns right right next to each other and you'll notice that um i kind of skipped the first one but let's take a look at the um at the extrude you want to select the thin extrude type so this is a new addition to the extrude feature so once you have that selected now you can start selecting uh, just single lines. It doesn't have to be just a single line. It could also be single curves. So that's good to know. You want to have the chaining uh, thing selected as well. And then the main thing we want to sit here is the distance, which really is like how much of an extrude you want, and then how much of a thickness do you want for your walls. Now, as I was playing around with this, I needed to kind of adjust the wall thickness. So that's why I have this user parameter called grid brick. I could have called it wall thickness or grout thickness or something, but that's just what I named it. Um, and then the next thing is you kind of want to when I'm building my patterns with just single lines, I always think of the extrude or the thicken as a symmetrical thing. So it's nice that you can select uh, either side one, two, but for this type of pattern, you want to do a center wall location. Um, so that way it keeps it nice and symmetrical uh, with, with some of the other things. So that's the first extrude. The sec So that creates individual bodies. And then the next extrude will combine them. So what's cool about this is it kind of, you, if with the operation join, you can kind of combine all of these individual bodies in one body, and that kind of is doing three things. You're, you're extruding, you're wall thickening, and you're joining. So you're kind of merging all that together in this one thing. And it's important, again, to have these separate because I need to have independent rectangular patterns to create this single body. So with that created, I end up with one body. And now I can start using these two extrudes to create my rectangles, right? So the next one is doing the, uh, the columns. So you can see here it's just creating uh, a rectangular pattern. And let's take a look at the rectangle pattern and see what user parameters I'm using here. So you can see here I have um, the object selected, which is just this extrude here. That's what creates the columns. And then I have a direction set, which is just one of these lines. Uh, the distance type is set to spacing because that's the type of uh, spacing we want. We want consistent spacing. Uh, right now, there is a hard-coded value of quantity, so I have four. Depending on the scaling of your, uh, you know, of your of your texture, this this is going to have to adapt and change. And then the user parameter here is the brick length. That's the distance that I want. And uh, I didn't have to do any division or anything like that because it's kind of already baked into uh, into that first thing there. Uh, and then for the quantity, I for the second quantity, because you can do multiple extrudes, but because, I mean, multiple patterns, but because we are uh, have individual spacing, I'm, I'm using two different ones. Um, so that's really it for that first one. So once that's set, I use another rectangular pattern to patternize this, because what we have here is basically a set of two rows in a couple of columns. So with that, um, let's look at the second. Um, the second uh, rectangular pattern. You see in my timeline, uh, be, just because of the nature of what's going on here, it makes some, it, it does some extra things that we don't need, but we do get a single body that is our entire, uh, our entire uh, pattern, right, our, our texture. And if we look at the surface of this thing, it's just one surface, which is perfect for the emboss feature. So again, we're not creating bricks, we're creating the grout. And with the grout, we can now apply this project that onto the surface and create a cut so that the cut, once it, once the grout gets cut away from the surface, those things that are left behind become the bricks, right? So uh, instead of like just um, using this uh, the surface, we actually have to create a sketch and project in this surface into that sketch. So really easy to do that. You can just select the surface, hit the create sketch button, and depending on how you have, uh, if you have auto uh, projections turned on or off, it'll just do it. But uh, I have it turned off, so I create the sketch and then just select the thing and then make a projected sketch. So this is what it looks like. Your sketch will have blue line or purple, <laughs> purple lines indicates that it is reference geometry. Um, so that's that's why it's purple. It just lets you know that hey, this is uh, being projected from a body, and that's what we want. Again, it's just one selection. Uh, instead of like a bunch of bricks, right? So that's really cool. So now that we have the sketch, uh, we can start using our emboss. So let's look at the first emboss. Uh, that's what it looks like. If I double click on it, you can see the values in here. 
Uh, we're just selecting one sketch first, which is the grout, right, that we got from our solid body. Um, I do want to have uh, the tangent chain should be selected. Uh, really, this is three surfaces, but with the chain selection, it'll kind of merge these three into one surface so it can go across that. And it's this fillet that allows that to be a chain surface. Wow, my mixture just got weird. Um, so yeah, so that's that's how it's able to kind of uh, apply it across three different uh, three different uh, surfaces because this fillet kind of creates a tangent chain. So that's that's what's going on there. Uh, and then you can change the effect. So if you want it to be a cut or an extrude, they call it a deboss or an emboss. So this is really a, a deboss, but an emboss is is the name of the feature. And then for the depth, I'm using a um, I'm using the brick grid just to be consistent. So that's half of a millimeter. Now, really important, the alignment. These are sort of, think of it as offsets. So I did have to kind of hard code some offsets just to kind of avoid sort of weird chewed up geometry. So if you look at the corner here, you'll see what I'm talking about. Like if you were to zero out these alignments, um, it tends to kind of chew up those corners because just, just because like it just needs to shift over a little bit. So thankfully the alignment is built into the emboss so you don't have to change the sketch. You can just you can just fudge these numbers here until you have a placement that looks good. And you really wanna kind of look at all the surfaces um, because there could be some problems here because we're just creating a texture, but it is creating new geometry. Uh, so that's, that's working there. And that's the first emboss. We need two embosses uh, because I wanted to have it on the, on the back side as well. But what's cool about the emboss is you can just kind of reuse the same sketch. So that's what I did here. I didn't have to create another sketch. I just used that same sketch. And even though the sketch is like a little bit offset from where it needs to be, the emboss doesn't care. It's, it, it's still working. Um, so let me go into this one. And you'll notice that the, the kind of the length of the surface is different. So that's why it has different alignments. So you'll see here that it's, it's, it's fairly different and it, because of the like the additional lengths of the surface, you'll see that the, the texture actually cuts off right here and right here, which actually works okay uh, for, for me. Like I think that's okay. Um, but over here you can see that in the front side it, it doesn't quite it kind of goes over uh, the surface, but I think that's fine. You could you could play around with the numbers but for me it, it didn't really matter so that's kind of why I left it. I'm using the same depth uh, brick grid. And that's really it. Just a couple of different alignment features, and you know, have the same consistent uh, depth, and it, it looks pretty much the same. They kind of line up uh, pretty nice too. Now that looks great. It looks cool. But to add more depth, I wanted to chamfer out these surfaces. Right now, you can start selecting the brick, um, because if you were to print this as is, this prints on the side, by the way, um, it would have these overhang geometry, and it would work, but like. I think adding chamfers would make it look much more smooth and give it more depth. So there are over 100, maybe even 300 individual brick surfaces. And using the chamfer tool, normally you think like, well, I have to select edges, right? Well, the latest updates to the chamfer tool, you can select surfaces. So what I was able to do is instead of selecting each individual surface, I used a couple tools to make this easier, right? So here's the chamfer, it was applied. And if I go into it, Fusion's going to think about 100 different faces. It just does, right? Like, I'm, how did you select so many faces, right? Well, there's some tools that you can use uh, to make it easier. So I'm going to hit cancel because there are some bad things that could happen if I put the wrong number in. But if you look under the select drop down window, you can see that you have this thing called selection filters. This allows you to kind of filter out some of the things that you don't want to select. And in this case, we want to select faces. So what I'll do is I'll hit the select all, and that'll deselect everything. And now I only want to select body faces. That'll make it so it only allows me, with the cursor, to select faces. That is good because we, want, we don't want to select anything else. The next thing is to use the paint select tool. So this allows you to just use your cursor to kind of paint out these selections. So this worked out better than having to select 99 faces. It just makes it easier because you could just kind of do a marquee selection and it'll only select those faces. So that's really nice. So that's how I was able to kind of select all of them. So um, because there was some weirdness going on, um, I had to kind of break this up into two chamfers because then it would have been just too much for fusion. Um, so I have these, 
the back side has its own chamfer. And uh, this one worked out better because if you look here, um, I kept getting an error on this brick. <laughs> uh, I think it has to do with this right here, this little piece of geometry there. Um, so I just selected that and did its own independent chamfer and it worked out fine. Fusion was able to figure out how to smooth out this little corner here. And that's because there's a rounded edge and I just wanted the rounded edges because uh, it just felt better, more clean. But that, that's it, you, you, can, you can do as many chamfers as you want, but it's cool that you can use something like a selection filter and the, um, the paint select tool uh, to, to, just to select hundreds of surfaces. And I, you know, I didn't want to do the bottom because it's gonna stand up like that, but um, that's how I got the brick texture. Now you notice like, where are the mounting holes? The mounting holes came after because I was, as I was doing it, I kept running into issues where the emboss tool kept bugging out. And that's like a fair warning. Like if you were to change any, any values here, radiuses, thicknesses, your emboss is gonna freak out because there's just too many things going on. So word of advice, uh, dial in the shape, the proportions, the mounting holes, all the things that you want, and then treat your texture as a last thing. Um, but in this case, I, I kind of had to apply uh, the emboss first and then the mounting holes. So let me show you. So the, so the first extrude shows like these, uh, these mounting holes. And the reason why I made it made these mounting holes in extrusion is because uh, without it, it looked, the geometry just looked weird because of the way the grout is. So I have this extruded out a little bit more. Let me show you the sketch too for the mounting holes. The mounting holes has its own sketch. Um, that worked out well uh, for me. But these numbers here are basically the distances that are uh, that were used um, for creating the PCB. So that's that those that's where I got these numbers from. Um, it's actually the same uh, mounting hole line distances uh, to the to one of the Raspberry Pis, which is uh, kind of a side note. But yeah, that's how was, that's that's the sketch that's created here to create these these uh, standoffs. Now what's cool about the extrude is you can apply a tapered angle so I didn't have to create a chamfer. So I just did a tapered angle of negative 45 and that made these uh, and that made these standoffs look nice and um, nice and chamfered, right? So that's how I created that. And then on the back side, because this stand is a little bit extra thicker, I had to kind of punch in, do, do a counter bore. And these holes here are bigger than an M3 screw because this accommodates for the diameter of the screw head. So the screw head's actually gonna be kind of fitted into there. It's counter, is it counter sunk or counter bore? One of those. And uh, it's just a, a, little bit of, uh, a little bit of a cut here so that um, my screws don't have to be too long, right? This is kind of a thick stand, but that's just the nature of the brick. But with that created, um, I, did, I did the M3 hole. Now I want the screws to pass through, so I made it a little bit bigger than M3, so it's um, uh, 3.2 millimeters. And that is also a user parameter, so if I wanted to change that, I could change that too. Uh, but yeah, that's that, the last bit there then would be to do a chamfer on those edges, just kind of round it off, because it's gonna be printed like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the last bit of it. Um, as a last kind of thing, I just added the, um, I added the Funhouse PCB, and then I used some joints here to, uh, to attach it. And then I added some screws in here um, from McMaster Car. And then I, you know, I used a rectangle pattern to make four copies. And then I just stuck them in into into their places using a joint, a rigid joint. Um, so that that's that's only there just for kind of animation purposes. So if you take a look at my animation tab workspace, like you can see I kind of created this cool animation that shows. Uh, how the pieces uh, kind of fit in there. But that would be another tutorial. I have a tutorial on how to do this too, so you can check those out. But that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Um, I guess at this point, like, I kind of want to show tweaking things, but I know it's going to break the emboss feature. Um, even, even here, I'll do an example. So let's say I want to go back before the texture was applied right here. And let's say I start tweaking the viewing angle. So the viewing angle is right. Oh, I don't think I added it as a user parameter. That's fine. I can bring out the sketch and just change it here. Oh yeah, I have to go select, make sure everything is selected. <laughs> so here we go. Let me make this uh, 50. All right. Let me make this 60 and then I'll bring it back to 70 because that's where it was, right? So even though I've changed it back, 
Fusion has to recalculate the emboss stuff, and it doesn't really do a good job of it because just because there's a lot of stuff going on. You can see down here, I don't know if you can see that because my face might be covering it, but it has a computing emboss and it's just chugging away. It's like, ah, uh, that, that looks okay. Let's see if the chamfers though, because the chamfers tend to kind of bug out too. So again, my, my warning is to just tweak it, do the tweaks and stuff after you've, uh, before you've, you've applied the texture. It looks like it's okay. I think it did it fine. Sometimes it, it messes up, but in this, this is nice that it didn't. But if it does, you can go back into the emboss and just select or deselect what you need. Um, but yeah, that seems to work fine. Cool, I hope you guys learned something. Definitely check out using Thin Extrude. I use that so much in my workflow. Uh, I'm so glad that, that, that uh, the Fusion team has added that to the extrusion. And then emboss, I just keep finding new ways to kind of break the emboss tool, which is really nice too. But hey, I hope you guys check it out. Check out the fun house. If you're doing IoT projects, home automation projects, or just need a screen and a quick way to add sensors. The Adafruit Funhouse might be the board you're looking for. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of this one. I will see you in the next one. But until then, remember to make a yellow brick road day. Bye, folks.